bad? It's not the other way around, the way the racist uh, liberal professors would have you believe? Well, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, you ought to tell that to Hillary Clinton. She says it's all based on racism. Well, uh, she's wrong. She oh, I know she's wrong. Of course she's wrong. She attacked police last night. How any cop could ever vote for her, I don't understand it. But wait, Sanders was worse than her. Now, I want you to listen to the big lie in clip seven. You'll hear the lie immediately. It's worth listening to. Fire clip seven, please. We have a criminal justice system which is broken. Who in America is satisfied America. that we have more people in jail than any other country on earth, including China, disproportionately African-American and Latino? Again, so the statement seems as though they're arrested because they're African-American and Hispanic, not because they committed crimes, which they then uh, was adjudicated in a court of law and they went to prison. It's only because of the race. This is what we mean by racism and race warfare. And I wish somebody could speak to him about elocution. It is not America, and it's not Cuba. It's actually America. Words that end in an A generally end in an A. America, America, not America. And it's not Cuba, Bernie. It's not Cuba, and it's not America. But okay, this is what you want. It'd be fun if he became president. This would be a fun time in America. Bernie Sanders is president. Just what we need in a time of uh, Muslim supremacy. That's just what we need in a time of uh, Islamofascism is a man like Bernie Sanders, a man who has never fired a BB gun in his entire life, leading the military. Can you imagine him leading the military? Can you imagine this? It's unbelievable to me. Okay, that opens up a couple of lines, 855-407-282. Shall we take Charles on WABC when we come back? Charles, go ahead. Fire away right now. Let's see what you have to say, please. I'm Michael Savage. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to ask you, what makes an American? No, please, let's not play Tal Talmud here. I'm not, I'm not on Eastern Parkway. What's your point? My point is this, sir. I think what the, the people are really trying to say is that there should be equal justice for equal people. The justice should be devil on the le level of equality, not on race. Well, well, why, why do you assume there isn't? We have a black president, a black attorney general, many black people running in many departments of America. Where, where's there no equal justice? Was there equal justice when the federal government had to take armed guards and, 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 and march a six-year-old girl off the walkway to her school as there would have been equal justice, that would not have been... Wait, wait, wait. What, what, year are you, what year are you talking about? I don't know what year you're talking about. Well, I mean, we are talk, I'm talking about, I'm going back. But you see, you said equal justice. You yeah, but you're talking about the 1960s, before the Civil Rights Movement. I mean, it's not 1965 anymore. We're living in 2016. A lot has happened. But you can't live in the past and think you're seeing the present. You're only seeing the world through the, the eyes of the past, Charles. Listen, I'm trying to... Charles, Charles listen to me. You're, you're probably a reasonable man. I'm sure you and I would enjoy talking to each other. But you've got to live in the present to know what's going on in the present, Charles. Thanks for the call. Back in a minute. Yep. Thanks to Hillary and Bernie and the entire Democrat, socialist, Islamist, corrupt machine. That's where we're going. And someone's got to put a brake on the truck as it skids down, skids down the highway. Portland Community College should devote an entire month to whiteness shaming. Whiteness shaming. Whiteness History Month will attack white children in colleges and tell them to be ashamed of their, their race. This is being done by the communists. Uh, it's being run by the white communists. Make no mistake about it. The the Sololinsky type of commie professors. Just imagine the young ones who look like Bernie Sanders did many many years ago when he still had a full head of hair. This is who's pushing this now. They're getting away with overt racism, making white children say they're ashamed of being white. It was conceived by a subcommittee of the college's so-called Campus Diversity Council. Campus Diversity Council. How many years have I, Michael Savage, said to you, diversity is a code word for perversity? It perverts the very meaning of the word 
academia. It perverts the very meaning of the word racial justice. And they're getting away with it under the guise of re-educating white children in this sense to make them hate themselves. And I'll tell you more about that. They're going to define what whiteness is. They say it is not even referring to skin color. It's not limited by skin color. Listen to this. These psycho professors are telling your children that whiteness does not simply refer to skin color, but to an ideology based on beliefs, values, behaviors, habits, and attitudes, which result in the unequal distribution of power and privilege based on skin color. So in other words, if you work hard, that's racism. If you study, that's racism. This is how sick it's become. Where is it all heading? I think you can pretty much figure out where this... This doesn't end with a whimper. It ends with a bang. Let's put it to you that way. This does not end with a whimper. It ends with a bang. You can only push people so far they explode. Now, we haven't reached that point yet because this is the most tolerant nation on the planet. No other nation on earth would have tolerated these insignificant, cowardly professors getting away with what they've been getting away with this long. No nation on earth would have tolerated it this long. But because this is the most tolerant nation on the planet, they've gotten away with virtual murder. They've murdered your child's sense of self-respect if he or she is white. Ask your child how often they've had to hear about their white privilege, even if they've worked two jobs after school and come from humble beginnings. Ask yourself the question, what nation do you want to leave behind? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Savage. Four minutes after the hour in the Savage Nation. What is this, Rihanna? Eh, more cultural degeneracy. More cultural degeneracy, big deal. <laughs> Tattoos on her, you know what. <laughs> and you bring in fundamentalist throwbacks from the Middle East, they rape them. They don't know why. So all of a sudden the feminists have nothing to say about it because they don't know they don't know which way to turn. Then you turn on Showtime and there's an Andrew Dice Clay blue show. Now I've heard everything. I've seen everything imaginable. <laughs> Let me see, where do where do I begin on the cultural degeneracy of the Andrew Dice Clay blue show on Showtime? Uh have you ever seen or heard anything more misogynistic in your life with a fake audience? It was all about crimes against women. The most vulgar, anti-women woman commentary, uh, comedy, if you want to call it that, on Showtime. I thought Andrew Dice Clay years ago was not offensive. He was kind of, I don't know what he was, but he was in that Woody Allen movie, looked like a big schlubby idiot husband. I thought he had a, a sympathy. And then he has guys on like the Smash Brothers, which are beyond disgusting. They're not entertainers or comedians. They're committing crimes against women in what they were doing. And then he had a comedian on in this Andrew Dice Clay Blue show, the last one, dressed like a Nazi with a pentagram on his arm and a tattoo. He says things like this. I always wanted a child, but I couldn't catch one. And the audience laughs. This is on Showtime. And you wonder why there's a conservative revolution going on in America? You wonder why people have had enough of this vomit? Let's go to the callers, please. Mohammed on WFTL. What? Go shove it. You speak English in this show, sucker. We're not living in the, in one of your occupied lands yet. So now they're telling to call shows and to, to, to spritz us in Arabic. You hear this? You know, it's interesting. The Muslims don't even know the unintended consequences of what they're doing. I read an article this morning in the L.A. Times that says activists turn tolerant St. Petersburg into homophobic city. Now, I also told you in my book, Government Zero, that the whole reason the West, meaning Obama and the left, the uh, liberals, so to speak, hate Putin is because he's a uh, extreme conservative on social values. And he also does not tolerate, I must put it to you as clearly as I can, let us put it to you this way, the message of diversity that we have accepted lock, stock, and barrel here in America. I'll put it in a nice way. And so there's a man featured named Timur Bulatov, who calls himself a homophobic wolf. 
and he's leading a an assault against individuals who we who he considers to be propagandists for the LGBT fascism. And I'm quoting him now. And he says that they are corrupting Russian society by encouraging acceptance of gays, lesbians, and transgender people. Now, the important part of this article is who Timur Bulatov is. He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim in Russia leading a charge against the LGBT activists in Russia. Can you believe this? And so watch out, Muslims, for the unintended consequences. If you think that all will work out well with liberals, how do you explain the, let us say, social viewpoints that they have? They're, they're in, their social viewpoints are uh, antithetical to that of Islam. Interesting. Timur Bulatov calls himself a homophobic wolf, and he runs around looking for individuals who he considers to be pushing the homosexual agenda or LGBT fascism. And again, I'm quoting. And he found a doctor named Dmitry Izyov, who led a commission of psychiatrists in St. Petersburg that approved hundreds of sex change operations. And, and Mr. Bulatov complained to the State Medical Institute, where the doctor had practiced and taught since 06. And so the supervisors disbanded the commission and forced Dr. Izyov to resign. Isn't that weird? Fascinating article from... Um, Mansour Miraval, Miravalov in the L.A. Times, which I think I put up on michaelsavage.com. Activists turn tolerant St. Petersburg into homophobic city. Now, my headline is Muslim leads charge against LGBT activists in Russia. That's a more accurate, uh, you know, headline. 855, what are the other headlines here other than my phone? Or headlines for the Savage Nation. British Prime Minister David Cameron says Muslim immigrants who don't learn English could be deported. Portland Community College should devote an entire month to whiteness shaming. Dogs guard El Chapo at Mexican prison. Refugee crisis could become something bigger. And they say with the collapse of oil prices, African nations are going to collapse and almost a billion inhabitants could move north and completely decimate Europe. There'll be no Europe left. Zero. Let's see. American folk singer hopes peace concert for ISIS will, will win over terror group. Look, I wrote the book, Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. An Oregon folk singer is going to serenade the Islamic State. He's going to bring the black-clad barbarians a prayerful message of peace. Even though the so-called State Department said that his life could be in danger, this idealistic moron of Portland, Oregon, says he has a calling, and that going there and playing folk songs to them can soften the hearts of the Islamist army known for beheading Westerners, throwing gays off of buildings, and summarily executing innocent women and children. He said it's going to be very powerful at his concert. He said when people come together and focus on something in a positive way, there's scientific evidence that it can change things for the better. So the psycho folk singer will travel to Israel and leaving from there to cross over into western Syria and set up a special concert in ISIS-controlled territory. I personally think that he will say, soothe them to such an extent that all of them will lay down their weapons and give peace a chance. 855-407-282. Let's go to the callers. I have so many good callers, but I don't know. No, let's not go to the callers. Let's not go to the callers. Did anyone see the Andrew Dice Clay Blue Show? Leave one open line for that. Am I the only one who sat up late Friday or Saturday night watching it? I mean, I've heard everything. I, I'm not a fading rose. I've heard every dirty, filthy thing imaginable. I never, I never saw anything that was so vilely anti-woman and so hideously anti-female in my entire life. How did Showtime run a thing like this? I'm no prude. But I believe that these are reasonable cause, this is reasonable cause for crimes against women, what they said on this show. I never heard such vile, anti-female language in my entire life. And Andrew Dice Clay, I, I thought, was a reasonably funny guy. I think he's a sicko, really a sick man. He had people on like the Smash Brothers, sick men, very ill men saying things about female anatomy that you would not believe would be said on Showtime. And I don't know, was I the only one watching it? I started watching it at 11 o'clock at night. I was bored. It was raining. Turned it on. The dog and I, thundering, raining. Even the birds were hiding. I said, no, this can't be. I, I said, it got worse by the second. And it went from anti-woman to anti-gay to anti-Asian to anti-Hispanic 
And then it topped off 